presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother or sister offend me, how many times must I forgive them? As many as seven times? Jesus said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven times. That is why the kingdom of God may be likened to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed him a huge debt. As he had no means of paying the sum, the king gave orders that he should be sold together with his wife, his children, and all of his property in payment of the debt. Now the man fell at the king's feet and implored him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, and I will pay you back in full. The king was so moved with pity that he canceled the entire debt. Now, as that servant was going out, he met a fellow servant who owed him a mere fraction of what he owed the king. He grabbed him by the throat and began to choke him, saying, Pay me what you owe me. The servant fell at his feet, imploring him, saying, Be merciful, and I will pay you back everything. But he would hear none of it. Instead, he had him thrown into jail until he should pay the entire debt. The king's servants were greatly shaken when they heard what had taken place. They reported the entire thing to the king. The king gave orders, bring that servant to me. You worthless wretch, he said. Did not I forgive your entire debt when you appealed to me for mercy? Were you not bound them to have pity on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And he gave the order, throw this servant into prison until he should pay the entire debt. And Jesus turned to his disciples and said, This is exactly how your heavenly Father will deal with you, and with you, and with you, until you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. There are many things in the gospel where Jesus is a bit ambiguous and we scratch our head and saying, what is he saying? And the parables are open to multiple interpretations. But this gospel is not one of those. Jesus could not be more clear. Let me suggest just three points for us to ponder this morning in this mystery of forgiveness where many books have been written and lots and lots of uh, sermons have been given. But three points to ponder. Number one, only God can forgive. There's an ancient Jewish saying, only God can forgive. What they mean by that is it's only through God's grace that we're able to forgive from our hearts. I think for human beings, what Jesus is requiring us here that we forgive 70 times seven times or that we continuously embark on this journey of forgiveness is simply impossible for human beings except through the grace of God. So point number one is we need to ask for the grace to be able to forgive what we cannot do by ourselves. Point number two flows from the first is to recognize is that forgiveness like love is a choice. 
we choose to forgive. Sometimes we equate love with emotion, but as Marriage Encounter teaches over and over again, as the Gospels and the commandments teach us, love is a choice, love is a decision. Our emotions wax and wane. They're here today, they're gone tomorrow. We feel passionately in love, we feel out of love, out of sorts. Forgiveness, like love, is a choice. I choose to forgive. And what does it mean to forgive, except that I choose not to hold the harm you have done to me against you. I choose, like love, to will the good of you. To good what, to, I will what is good for you. When I forgive you, I don't hold on to resentments. I want only good things to happen to you. Forgiveness is not reconciliation. Forgiveness can be a one-way street. We can choose forgiveness even if the other person is angry at us, even if the other person doesn't change their behavior. Reconciliation is a two-way street. Reconciliation, concilia is the Latin word for eyelash. Reconciliation is eyeball to eyeball of there's a meeting of minds, meeting of hearts. There's a mutual forgiveness. Reconciliation is a two-way street. But forgiveness can begin with a one-way street. Regardless of whether the other person changes their behavior or not, we choose the good of the other person. Of course, the gold standard for that is Jesus on the cross, isn't it? Jesus from the pulpit of the cross looking down on those who had engineered his death saying, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. On one level, they knew exactly what they were doing. They wanted Jesus dead. They wanted him dead and tortured in the most terrible way that the Roman Empire could engineer death. And they got what they wanted. But on a deeper level, what they didn't realize is that they were simply pawns of the devil. The devil manipulating their, their hearts, filling them with resentment, jealousy, anger, envy, so that they would commit the most terrible of sins. A contemporary example of that that I've, I've mentioned before is what's going on in the terrible war that is being perpetrated against the Ukrainian people through no fault of their own. Vladimir Putin and the power structure of, the, of, of, of Russia have decided that they want to annex the Ukraine and they have unleashed terrible atrocities against the Ukrainian people. I suspect in the midst of that, much of the world feels justified in, in, in saying, let's hate the Russians, let's hate Vladimir Putin and hope that he is consigned to one of the darkest chambers of hell. One of the Ukrainian poets has written a poem called, We Will Never Forgive. We understand that, but it has nothing to do with the gospel. And many of the Ukrainian people are Orthodox Christians. They follow Jesus, as many of the Russians claim to follow Jesus. Vladimir Putin is, is a baptized Christian. And as I've mentioned many times, uh, the, the patriarch of Moscow, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church uh, is, is in favor of the war. So how, how does one in the favor of such brutality not hate, not give in to resentment? Well, by pondering this gospel and say forgiveness is choosing the good of the other. Forgiveness is not wanting the others to end up to go to hell, but to be converted Forgiveness is a choice, often a very difficult choice, but it's a choice. And step number three, or point number three, is forgiveness is a process. It's not like 
flipping on the light switch. I, I am not forgiving, I'm forgiving. It doesn't work that way. One of the most instructive books that I've read on that regard that I reference often is Don't Forgive Too Soon by Father Matthew Lynn and his brother Dennis and his sister-in-law Sheila. They make, I think, a very valid point of if we rush to forgive and just say, okay, I forgive you, then we're denying the human process. They said forgiveness is a process much like the process of death and dying, that we go through these different stages of we deny the hurt we get filled with anger because of the hurt. We enter into a depression because of the hurt. We try and bargain our way out of, out of it until we eventually come to this acceptance. Now forgiveness is recognizing our human emotions, engaging our human emotions, and going back to point number one. Only God can forgive, begging for the grace to be able to do what we cannot do. Help us not to give in to resentment, not to give in to hatred, not to be stewing over and over again about what evil has been perpetrated against us. Working our way through these emotions in a process. The Lynn said there are these five different stages. St. Thomas Aquinas said there are over 20 stages. However you parse it, however you divide it, it's a process that we enter upon. And forgiveness, if we forgive the other, that doesn't mean that there aren't consequences to their actions. One of the most famous examples of forgiveness in the last 50 years was St. Pope John Paul visiting in the Italian prison the man who was hired by the Soviets who tried to assassinate him. Pope John Paul met with him at least twice and forgave him. But the man wasn't released from prison. There were still consequences to his action. And, but Pope John Paul forgave him from his heart and met with him private, in, in private. Another example of, of that is Cardinal Bernadine meeting with Stephen Cook, the man who falsely accused him. There, there was a full reconciliation because Bernadine forgave Cook and Cook forgave Cardinal Bernadine and re-entered the Catholic Church. Forgave Bernadine, not because of any ill that Bernadine had perpetrated against Cook, but he was a representative of the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church had, who had not taken his accusation when it was first brought to the attention of the authorities seriously. And in fact, another priest had abused Stephen Cook. There was this beautiful process of reconciliation and Cook re returned to the Catholic Church, died as a Roman Catholic. Another example of that is Corey Tinbaum, whose family was captured and tortured and executed by the Nazis. Corey had written about the importance of reconciliation and, and forgiveness. And one day, one of the guards in the concentration camp that, that she had been exiled to came up, and she immediately recognized that man, and he extended his hand. And she had been preaching about forgiveness, and at that moment, she froze. But she prayed for the grace to be able to forgive him and a deeper reconciliation a mutual forgiveness was given that day. As we ponder this gospel, let's remember to pray for the grace to do what we cannot do for ourselves, to continue to choose forgiveness, and to recognize that it is a process that we embark on that may take days or weeks or years to enter into the fullness of that gift. Amen? Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love. 
the gospel.